Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To those of you who know me in person, then you know who this is. And again, the message is more important than the messenger in any case. Um, I start with the name of Allah, the compassionate and merciful, and I seek his refuge from misleading and being misled, and from deceiving and being deceived, from the evils of disbelief and poverty. In this month of Ramadan, I am uh, very clear in my thoughts, and I'm very deliberate in saying what I'm going to say. Um, we understand that the Muslims are supposed to be united and to one, one Ummah. And if you're not Muslim, then you probably still feel that humanity should be united and that you, humanity should not mistreat itself on the basis of its varying origins. Well, I would certainly agree that people should learn to treat each other equally and respect each other's rights equally and to hold themselves to their responsibilities equally. Yet and still, the fact remains that it is not merely um, It's not merely human instinct that governs human behavior. There is something else that has increasingly begun to govern human behavior across the globe, and I've said it before, and that is white supremacy. It is piped in through the television, disguised as other things and other ideas. And when people subscribe to white supremacy, they don't know that they are subscribing to it. Um, it's like water to a fish. When you slowly change the water too, um, too gradually for the fish to pick up on the changes, then you change that fish and the fish does not know. If you all of a sudden take a fresh water fish and throw them in salt water, then that fish will be aware of the change. If you take that fish out of water, that fish is aware of the change. And the fish on some instinctive level understands that they also must be going through changes. So I say this so that we understand the analogy. White supremacy slowly changes the atmosphere in which we grow up and breathe and learn. And so we're not fully aware of this. We're somewhat aware of technological changes uh, and cultural changes due to technology, but we're not aware that we have largely been changed by white supremacy. We think that some of our white supremacist ideas are just human instinct. Where I live in the Middle East at this point, many people with no concept of hatred for black folks still think that the preference for white folks is just human instinct. They actually believe, despite their Islam, that it's just human instinct and human nature to prefer white over black. They don't have the ability and the training to think analytically. So you cannot say to them, you've been brainwashed through the TV. They would get upset because they think that only stupid people can be brainwashed. No, intelligent people are usually the first ones brainwashed. Hypnosis, according to some people, hypnosis works most on intelligent people, not on stupid people. And the sad thing is that many people where I live, they are stupid, but they're not born that way. They are artificially stupid by training and practice. Well, I asked a class of adult students one day in this country. Um, first off, your preference for women. Is it true that romantically you would prefer the European woman than the Arab, than the African woman? But for marriage, you would prefer the Arab woman than the European, than the African woman. Is that true? They said it was true. 
And I asked them, where did you learn this preference from? And they pretty much said television. Now, they did not realize that they were engaging in analytical thinking. They thought they were just explaining their culture to somebody. So, of course, they're willing to give answers. Their brain comes alive then because they're interested in spreading their culture. I said, okay, thank you. Now, this proved to me, because if they knew that I was an anti-racist when I first talked to them, and then I asked them these questions, they would try to justify it, him and Hall, or they would tell me, shut up, you talk about it too much, even if I only talked about it once. Now, get, going on with the subject of interracial marriage, um, as a Muslim, I'm not allowed to prohibit interracial marriage. And I don't plan on it. It's not necessary. However, as a Muslim, I'm going to tell the Muslim and non-Muslim worlds, bottom line, that marriage, and for those who aren't Muslim, your concepts of romance and, and your preferences in dating, all of these preferences are governed by white supremacy. Who you want to date if you're into dating. Uh, and who you want to marry if, if you're into marriage. They are all governed by white supremacy. And people are going to say, how can that be the case? We're always seeing black men with white women on television. Here's how. Bottom line. It's on television, I know. <clears throat> but you see it on television more than you do on uh, in real life, to be honest with you. I know one black person in real life that's actually dating a white woman and he's older than I am and this is his first time. This is how rare it is in real life actually. And when it does happen I want to make something very plain. Usually when it happens and the study proved this the white women may date, romance and even fornicate with non-white men, but when it comes time to marry and settle down, they're going to do that with one of their own men. Or, they will consider marrying a non-white man if he has more money than most white men. The study showed that the same white woman would marry a white man who has less money than the Latin American or the African American that that same white woman would marry. In other words, you can take one Becky or one Amber and you can ask her, show her a photo of a white guy and, and ask her how much money he has to have and she'll give a figure. How much money does um, Mr. Lopez here have to have and she'll give you a figure. Okay, now, how much money does Mr. Jenkins over here have to have and she'll give you a figure and the figure goes up the further they get from white. So in other words for that white woman that same Becky to marry a Latin American man he may have to have about three times the wealth that that white guy has to have and bra man has to have eight times the wealth and assets that the white man has to have. Now the women in the study did not know that this was being studied. They thought it was just something else but Women on the street were asked about this study and white women on the street that were given the results and asked to give their opinions about why this would be the case pretty much said that Latin American man or that African American man is going to face discrimination there. They're going to have financial hardships at some point. And so for me to consider marrying them, I need a bigger security deposit. Come again? White supremacy sees to it that white men will have more assets than non-white men. So what these white women are saying is that for them to marry a non-white man, he has to be one of those exceptional non-whites who has more money than most white men. That's white supremacy. The white women are telling you that white supremacy governs who they will marry and who they will date and who they will fornicate with. It's telling you this. The more the commitment, the more assets have to be had. And they're telling you that even though white supremacy means that white men are going to have more money, you have to have more money than the white guy. So it's white supremacy on top of white supremacy. They're confessing to you that white supremacy is the reason that they're looking for you to have a bigger security deposit to protect them from the effects of white supremacy against you and your income.
Imagine that. The bottom line, it is all about white people not being poor. That's what it's about. And they, within their own community, they do have classism. This is the case. So anyway, Tommy Sotomayor put out a video where, even though the title of it was that if you're black and you date white women, if you're a black woman and you date white men, you're a bed wench, he then says, think about how stupid that sounds. So he's not really endorsing his own title. And he said that anyone should be with whoever they like that treats them well. But then he also says to the ladies, black women especially, if that man treats you well and lets you stay home while he works and he has a 790 credit rating, then you should like him. Hold up, Tommy Sotomayor. Do you not understand that white supremacy is the reason why white men have the 790 credit rating and the house on the hill and they can tell the white to stay home while he works and can spoil a woman? Do you not understand that the money you don't have or the rather the money you did not have growing up is in their hands because we were supposed to do the work so that they could have the money without working and that's the whole point of America. The secret to America's strength around the globe is America's money and its weapons. Well, who developed those things? They developed the weapons but they used the money that they didn't pay us for doing the work to develop the weapons. That's the secret to America's strength. America was this great big country with all this land. Yeah, because they stole it from the Indians. All this development, yeah, because they stole it from us. And now today, all these weapons, yeah, because they used the land and the money to develop the weapons that they stole. And sometimes they even got us to develop the weapons. And that's real. Weapons development has been the single accomplishment of the entirety of white western civilization now if you want to break down individual civilizations in the white west then you can come up with various accomplishments and sources of shame for them like you could with anybody but as a whole collectively weapons development and prolifer proliferation are their accomplishments that's it that's about it the technology that they developed, they developed in concert with other peoples around the world. They developed cars. The Japanese made better cars. Um, but cars and trains were not possible without lubricating cups, which were invent invent invented by Elijah McCoy. That's real. You see, a lot of the inventions in the United States before the Civil War were actually the inventions of slaves, but because they were property, their property was the slave master's property, and that included their inventions. So that means that the slave master, by law, got the patents for them, and they would be credited with these inventions. Any slave-holding American that had an invention or a patent, you can bet came from a slave. And even many times, those who did not, they did not even invent rock and roll. Now, going back to romance and dating, and which really just means who you want your children to be shared with. And who you want your grandchildren to even become. Is governed by white supremacy and this is global. And it is very subconscious. So, Miriam Shumate said that at the end of the day, we're just all human and we're all different, but we're all the same. Miriam, if your husband is a white man from the South, but he's also Muslim, even though you're not, then I got a bigger disagreement than the color arrangement. But I do also want to state this, though, Miriam. If it is really about just who you connect with, and I'm saying this to all people, all black folks, no matter of fact, all non-whites who love to promote interracial dating and marriage um, specifically, meaning instead of saying that it's instead of those who like to just they don't mind it, it's OK. I'm talking about those who love to promote it for whatever reason. I'm going to ask this question, be you man or woman, if you are not white, I'm going to ask you this. If this is such a beautiful thing, then why are there not more marriages between different peoples of color and not white folks? 
You see, interracial marriages is beautiful. That's fine. It, yeah, it's okay. If the two can communicate and they can get along together, excellent. But I got to ask this question. And since I've already asked it, I'm going to go ahead and explain something. Because white supremacy has left people of color with inferiority complexes. No, as a Muslim, I cannot prohibit interracial marriages and I don't plan on it. But I'm going to be honest. For the rest of the people of the world, I have to ask Actually, I have to advise you to suspend marriages specifically with whites. And I'm talking about outside the Muslim community. I need to ask you to suspend marriages with whites until white supremacy is no longer a thing. Because this is the only way to know that you are not marrying somebody because of your own inferiority complex. That's the only way to figure it out. That's it. Now, within the Muslim community... I would say that we'd have to come up with more creative ways to make sure that white supremacy is not a thing in our marriage uh, selections. Um, but that's within the Muslim community. So that means that any whites in the Muslim community, again, they are Muslim. And they should not be oppressed and refused marriages if they're compatible simply because they're white. I would not say that. The least white supremacist white person is usually the Muslim. And I have to tip my hat to them in this regard. Hamza Yusuf was an anomaly. Yeah, he is. He was an anomaly. Russell Alexander Webb was an anomaly. And there was another one, I think. I forgot uh, who he was in, in, in uh, the 1800s, I believe, that accepted Islam. Um, he was also an anomaly. Um, I read a news story about a neo-Nazi that accepted Islam and then he killed his neo-Nazi colleagues for disrespecting his new faith. So that just goes to show you when they do accept Islam, they accept it wholeheartedly, lock, stock, and barrel. Yes, I am Islamically condoning killing neo-Nazis. Legally, you go to jail for it. So I don't tell anyone to do it. But morally speaking, I do not have any qualms about uh, Muslims stabbing neo-Nazis in the heart. So doggone what? Morally speaking. And I hope that he, I hope that Allah never asks him about that on Judgment Day. Why did you kill them? I hope that never happens. I mean, they were neo-Nazis. What did they plan on doing to other people just because of their origins? Um, so, I would say that for the Muslim community, we'd have to be more creative. If somebody shows up and wants to marry one of your relatives and this person is white and you have had to fear white people all of your life, well, remember, you're dealing with a Muslim. So what do you do? Okay, where can we send you that you can live your lives together in peace and it's not going to be a thing that's going to draw any sort of backlash against you? So in that regard, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe sending them to Malaysia where no one's going to attack them for being um, an ethnically mixed couple that might be a good thing but all of us around the world are going to have to make sure that our preferences for marriage are not based on an inferiority complex and, and based on white supremacy or our acceptance of it we cannot afford this and unfortunately in the Muslim world in general, especially in the subcontinent and in the Arab world, in order for these parts of the Ummah to confront white supremacy, you're going to have to shut your damn mouths while black people, the blackest of the black, tell you very uncomfortable things about you and about white civilization that you look up to. And you're going to have to shut up and listen and drink it and take it in. Because the solution to this problem of white supremacy competing in the hearts and minds of Muslims with Islam is for them to actively seek it out and fight an internal jihad to get rid of this. It's been ingrained. We've grown up with it. It's in the milk. It's in the water. It's in the food. It's even in our cultural dishes. White supremacy. I'm sorry. There is no pro-black, anti-white Western uh, ideology um, in the subcontinent, there is none. 
there are individuals like this, but there's no pro-black society. The entire society is actually very white supremacist in the subcontinent. Um, in the Arab world, there is no pro-black society. It is actually very white supremacist. There are individuals who are not this way, but they're not a society. They don't even know each other. The and this is why it is that when anyone tells you that their preference for white is a personal preference, you ask them, then why the hell is it actually a cultural preference? This is something that people love to say, it's my personal preference. No, it's not. You watch TV, it's not your personal preference. You were programmed for it. A personal preference is if you're Thai, you may decide that you prefer somebody from the subcontinent, for instance. That's a personal preference. A personal preference is when, let's say, maybe a lady um, in Latin America um, prefers, maybe she prefers men from Eastern Asia. That's a personal preference. A personal preference might be that a man from Eastern Asia prefers an African woman or a Melanesian woman. They're also African. That might be a personal preference. But when an entire society prefers something, it is always white. And therefore, everyone that goes along with that preference can't say that it's personal. No, that's cultural. And there's a big difference between a personal preference and a cultural preference. That's real. Very big difference. In the society in which I grew up, skinny women were not preferred. I also didn't prefer skinny women. However, um, one of the preferences uh, was for athletic women. My preference was actually for women of a medium build, not so much um, women with muscular legs. I don't hate, I don't like that per se. It, it really doesn't matter. But uh, uh, women of medium height and medium weight are my particular preference. That is a personal one. Um, I knew, now I also like tall women. I knew men, a lot of guys, I knew they liked short women. The cultural preference was for short women. My preference, my personal preference was for medium height and for tall women. It could go either way. I grew up in a society where the cultural preference was for light-skinned women. My preference is for women of a medium brown shade. And I also like them chocolate. This is what people, this is the difference between cultural and personal preferences. And when people cite a personal preference as a reason to go along with a white supremacist, white supremacist preference that is in their culture, that's hypocrisy. Now, as far as black women go, I don't care really. I'm not so much hurt that other people don't want to marry black women. Actually, I think a lot of them want to secretly, but they would not admit it. However, I'm not hurt that they don't want to admit it because that's more for me. That increases my chances of being able to marry two. I'd love to be married to two at one time. Not so much three or four that's allowed, but my preference is just two. You got the best chance of being able to treat them fairly if it's two for most men, I think. But that's just, again, that's my personal view. But what does bother me, it does bother me when I see Muslims around the world willing to abandon their own people's women, jump over them for a woman from Europe that does bother me. Why? It pretty much tells me that you are complicit in your own oppression. That's really what it says. That's what it says to me. You were fine with the people who oppressed you. And as a matter of fact, after you were oppressed and colonized, you want your grandchildren to actually be, not just your kid, you want your grandchildren to actually be the oppressor. That's what it tells me. That means you want to become absorbed by the society of your oppressors. That's what it means. And that's why I have an issue with it. If a Muslim in, let's say if a Muslim in Iraq never thought about Bosnia or Chechnya, but he goes to school, he happens to meet 
a Bosnian or Chechnyan classmate. And they do well on a project together, find that they like each other, and so they go to their parents and talk about marriage, and that's one thing. But if, in, if a Muslim in Iraq is sitting up daydreaming in Iraq about a woman from Chechnya or Bosnia because they're white, don't lie about it. You value the phenotype of your oppressor, even though the Bosnians and Chechnyans are not your oppressor. You like them because they look like your oppressors, and that means you have an inferiority complex, and it means you are low-key white supremacist, which is a threat to your Islam, and you're sick. That's what it means. It is not a personal preference. It is a cultural preference, because most of the Arab world has the same view. It doesn't bother me that they don't want to marry black women. Great, that's better for me. It does bother me that they specifically want to be able to blend in with their oppressors and be indistinct from them. This is sick. This means that you actually need to be hypnotized. You got a deep-rooted psychological issue. If this were a world where there was no such thing as white supremacy and no such thing as racial oppression and colonization, then we could say it's just a personal preference for some people. And that would mean that others have other preferences because they're personal. But that's not what it is. Because history is what it is, because white supremacy and colonization and oppression have not only occurred in history but have shaped the modern day, then we have to see it for what it is. Yes, we're all Muslim, those of us who are Muslim. Yes. People, uh, all, all origins of people are equal. That is true. However, the oppressor can never be equal to the victim. And the favoritism for the oppressor over the victim is antithetical to Islam. This is something we're going to have to fix and correct. Until the subcontinent and the Arab world change their views of race and color. We Muslims who are black and very dark skin are not required to be more patient with you and just accepting and forgiving and this sort of thing. It is perfectly okay for us to react very harshly against you. Maybe even to the point of seg segregating against you in certain things, even in religion. Because what the hell is wrong with your Islam if you can't confront white supremacy? Salaam alaikum.